Hi there, board gamers. This is Michael Windsor from Meeple of Windsor, and I'm here to tell you about my favorite board game, Theseus, The Dark Orbit. It is a portal game. Um, it is for players ages eight and up. It is 45 to 60 minutes long about, and it takes two to four players to play, though I recommend it most with just two players. Um, and not only that, it includes the fifth faction, Pandora, which is, to be honest, a lot lamer than the other four, but <laughs> it adds a lot of extra to the game, so it's good to, it's good to have. Um, now, it's made by probably the best game designer of all time. I consider myself good, but this is the best board game designer, Michael Orax. Uh, he's probably better known for his um, game that is usually played as a cell phone app. It's called Nirishima Hex. Uh, it's, I think the app's developed by Big Day Creations, but if, if you are interested in what you hear about this game, I would try that game out too. But uh, let me dive into it. It's uh, a sci-fi game that's a lot like Moncala, but it is a deep strategy game. So let me go over that. Oh man, this game is so perfect that you can line up the pieces based on the original and the expansion in order using Roy G. Biv colors. All right, anyhow, can you tell I really like the game? Um, but basically, here are all of the factions for Theseus the Dark Orbit. So first we're gonna talk about the aliens. The aliens are, um, they're your generic gray alien. Um, basically their goal is to move around the board and collect data points. And they're really good at winning that way. And they kind of excel in mobility and manipulating mobility. They're probably my favorite unit. Um, then next is the Marines. These Marines, um, they can basically do massive damage really quickly. Um, then you have your uh, fifth faction, um, the Pandora faction. They're kind of like little sentient computer viruses that can take control of other cards and other units. Um, and then you have your um, aliens that are kind of like aliens from the movie, aliens, that, you know, the ones that burst out of your chest. Um, they're pretty fun. They kind of set booby traps up everywhere uh so it's like always booby trap awareness month when you're playing with them or they can like make like a massive swarm and do massive damage so they can kind of pick between aggressive and uh defensive booby traps then you got your blue um scientist ladies these uh they basically have like cards that don't really have much synergy but they're really powerful um so they can do massive damage and or get massive amounts of data points but they take a long time setting up so they're kind of like a control team and then you have your purple team which is they also excel mobility or i guess leaving play and coming back into play um However, how they're different is they kind of um, are more about dealing damage um, and using their data points as kind of a type of currency to help them. And then they can also, you know, steal upgrades and swap cards. So they're pretty manipulative. Uh, and then lastly, you have your, uh, your battle bots right here. Um, backlash. Uh, but basically, they just kind of, uh, they kind of charge up points or, like, damage, and then they just deal massive damage over a course of time from constantly weakening or growing their state. So these are the seven factions as they currently are in the game. I believe that's all of them right now. So this is how you play the game. The objective is to either knock your opponent's life down to zero or get 20 data points. Now, not all teams can get data points, 
but if you can, you can have that as one of your objectives. Or if cards start running out of decks, the timer starts counting down. If you have the highest combined total of the two, you win the game. Now, um, let's talk about how you set up. So each, um, each uh, sector is going to start with two of your units. So there's the green sector and the blue sector. So it's green versus blue in this game. Now players alternate taking turns in a two-player game. If there's more than two people, you circulate around the table. Also, you have to make sure each of these bonus cards are put where this little bonus icon is. Um, but basically, there's that, and you want to have two of your cards installed on these little installation slots. And I believe in the beginning you install some at the beginning of the one at the beginning of the game but we're not going to do that for explanation purposes so we're going to go to the phases there's four phases on this handy little turn card if you lose this card you might as well give your soul to the dark lord because how dare you you need this card um so we're going to go with the movement phase um oh still setting up so we also get to deploy our pieces still. The player that goes first is the closest clockwise to the onslaught phase. So we're just gonna do the generic start close to your base thing. Okay, so movement. You basically move um, equal to the number of units in a sector. It's kind of interesting. This is where the Moncala mechanic comes in. So it's screen team. So if they move, they have three people on three different rooms in that sector. So you go one, two, three. So you can really kind of mess up people's moves by going into a sector and then forcing them to move an additional space they didn't want to move. You have to move that number of spaces. Uh, and then there's two other things you need to keep track of. So if you step in a sector with a trap, so if it has like a hive put there, you'd be affected by that trap if it was the blue person that's set there. Or you have the lesser onslaught. So let's say you have this upgraded alien and there's a room full of blue ladies here. And then he somehow gets over here. A lesser onslaught would happen because all four rooms are filled and this alien is going to shoot everyone that isn't behind a wall. So there's a wall here. So these two are gonna get shot and then they share life so that life goes down too. Now that is how lesser onslaughts work. And now we're gonna go to the action phase. So let's pretend that there was an action card here all along. We'll say this small laboratory. Um, so when this uh, scientist steps here, one, two, three, four, they get to use all the actions that are there with this little icon. So I'd gain one data point for each enemy unit in that sector, which there is none currently. And that is basically the action cards phase. The third phase is the sector phase. Now, if you notice, each of these sectors has different icons on them. Those icons are important. Now, each of the bases, when you land on your own base, you can get one of these upgrade tokens, which you can discard to upgrade your units, or you can put them on cards in order to make them more powerful. Um, or you can use one of these, uh, you can boot cards off of your own slots, but only in your own base. Now there's also the onslaught icon. When this happens, you do a battle in every every sector, not just a lesser onslaught, a non-slot everywhere. This gives you another turn with a unit you have not moved at this turn. And lastly, this one allows you to relocate the malfunction token to deactivate cards or prevent them from being installed in other pending cards or these uh, slots right here, installation slots. And then last is the pending cards phase. These are the pending card slots. So if you land somewhere, let's pretend that this alien landed here, and we'll put a, a uh, actually, we'll, we'll say that this, um, 
this scientist landed here and gets to install a card, okay? So I can either install a card in any slot or just boot the enemy's card and replace it with one of my own. And these can't, you kind of want to put these cameras in because you can watch aliens do a number one and then say, you're not number one, I'm number one. So that's why you want to have these cameras out. And then you just put them in a slot. And that's basically how you do all the phases. Very good game, recommend it highly.